So we've teased the book a little bit. It's 291 pages, and it's titled Unwinnable War, The Fatal Flaw of Democracy, World Abandonment, and the Global Citizen. Taiwan, Afghanistan, North Korea, World War III, and the End of Humanity. There's a lot going on there. A lot going on there. And I think there's a few choice excerpts that we should read from to get the point of the book across. Because you might think, and I think a lot of people do think of this guy as like, I'm a libtard, like... Uh, we need to go like fight for Ukraine. We need to go fight for Taiwan. And you know, he did he did actually start similar to his Ukraine Foreign Legion website. He started a Taiwan Foreign Legion website, yeah. which seems to be basically copy pasted from the Ukraine Foreign Legion website. And he I think went to Taiwan at one point and did a similar flag ceremony thing in Peace Park there. I believe that the Taiwanese police were maybe a little bit quicker about throwing them out of there, especially because they are not at war and are certainly not taking a foreign legion for the war that is not happening right now. <laughs> but he, you know, you'd think of him as like this really like this warmonger guy, but he is rather prosaic when it comes to certain countries. This is his stance on North Korea. We could share the entirety of the USA with Kim Jong-un by way of video without him ever leaving his palace. Every citizen of the USA could be Kim Jong-un's best friend with mere long-distance interviews where not a single person would have to get out of their chair. He could share his hopes and dreams with us and we could do the same. Why have we not gone on bended knee and opened this door of diplomacy? We could make Kim Jong-un feel like a superstar as much as media coverage with as much media coverage as he can stand and maybe a sequel to the James Franco and Seth Rogen's movie ironically called The Interview where they are all friends and make North Korea a better place. Ruth is also surprisingly, I guess, magnanimous. Is that the word? Is that how you pronounce that? Magnanimous. Even? Magnanimous. Well, he's nice about Iran, you know. And John Kerry, he says, "I would like to celebrate the amazing work of John Kerry that very humbly and humanely handled the Iran deal, which elated me and the whole of the world. I must take part of the blame for the retarded child that we elected <laughs> for our next president that ended up being brainless." But I am man enough to say that I misjudged and made a terrible mistake. And Iran, I apologize. You are free to assassinate Trump as well as me for that error in judgment and the dismantling of the deal. So much hay has been made in the media over him imploring Iran to perhaps assassinate I Trump. I think they're taking this a little out of context. Definitely. And they're also... Of his life. They're and also, beliefs. but they're also, they're also, they're taking literally it out of context of the rest of the sentence. Because, yes, he says... Listen, Iran, you want to smoke Trump? Go ahead. He's also saying, kill me for voting for Trump. Yeah, he's sort of saying it like, sort of like, oh, you want to kill him? Well, you can kill me too because we are all very stupid. Exactly. And we got you a bad deal. We should all give John Kerry another Medal of Honor or whatever. <laughs> no, another, well, I, I got to say, that. All, all this type of guy fucking loves John Kerry. Yes. Because you know what? It's not about party, it's about honor. And he should have won. I'm surprised we should we should I should I should control F for McCain in this too, because I feel like there's a there's a, a spiritual kinship between No, but the- I feel like McCain was too much for going up against Obama. Yeah. Whereas Kerry is the sad one because he should have won against Bush. Yeah, and it was he was robbed. He also had this to say about a potential World War Three. I do dream of the day that we cross over into Russia and march towards Moscow. That is the part of this third world war that I look forward to. I want to be the one that burns down the Kremlin and all the cruelty that it signifies. I've been plagued with Russia my entire life, and I'm done with it. I do not know much about Reagan, but it seems that maybe he helped bring down the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union, and he may have been a modern hero. But I need to do some research. But it seems he may have had the diplomatic power we need now. He may be the role model that we should all follow. And it may have been the most peaceful time our planet has ever seen. And we may need to see how it was done. There's just no substitute for good old-fashioned diplomacy. Now, I like a couple things here. I like a lot of things here. One... I love that he couches it all with it may have been because he's still got to do his research. Yes. He's unsure. He's saying, look, I'm going to hedge because I haven't done my research. And me as the radical centrist that I am, I'm all about doing my own research. I need to get the facts together. You need to get the facts together. And so it may have been that it was, what did he call it? The most peaceful time in the world. No. I mean, look, I'm going to tell you right now, Ryan, it was not. 
89? What, 90, wait, when did the Berlin Wall fall? Well, just talking about Reagan's tenure. No. No, certainly not. Um, but I do like that he's interested in finding out if it was. This is, a, this is the sign of a man who respects his readership. He says, listen, I may have been around during that period. I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> Not sure exactly if Reagan was good or bad, or even, perchance, what he did. However, it might have been good, and if it was, we should do it again. Yeah. Jeffrey Epstein. Jeff, Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein.